evening. Welcome to the Soto United Methodist Church. We have a few announcements. Um, in the back of your bulletin, you'll see a list of a lot of announcements. I'm just going to highlight a few. The Trek or Treat is next Sunday, which is Halloween, from 3 to 5 p.m. at Tri Century Bank parking lot. You're invited to support our annual Trunk and Treat event by donating individually wrapped, store-bought treats in the Narthex, or helping at the event. Treat donations received in the box out front. Event sign up on bulletin board or contact Sabrina for online sign up. Today, you can meet with our new district superintendent, Tom Brady, from 4 to 5.30 p.m. at Wine.UMC. And the address is 7901 Oakland Avenue in Kansas City, Kansas. Then tomorrow evening, we'll have an Ad Council charge conference meeting here at the church in the sanctuary, or you can follow it on Zoom. And everyone is welcome to attend. And Shelly Field has an announcement for us. Thanks, Tammy. Good morning, good morning. So last year, because of COVID, we were not able to have our UNW Election Day dinner. But this year, we are going to have an Election Day dinner, but it's going to be in pre-order and drive-through pickup form. With a little bit of a reduced uh, menu, but still homemade pie. Come on. Um, now, the way we want to do this is have you guys pre-order by uh, Saturday, uh, October the 30th. And there are instructions in the e-weekly check out the e-weekly of how to do so. Um, I know this looks complicated, but don't worry. The important part is to let Marcia know what you want to order. And if you are not savvy with Venmo and PayPal, I can barely manage Venmo, Venmo at, at myself. Um, we will accept cash, you guys, or a check if you're a member of the church um, when you come to pick up your food. If you could just kind of be as close as you possible as your amount that you want to pay, that would be great since we probably won't have a lot of change, okay? You may be rounding up as a donation, just saying, okay? Um, barbecue, beef, turkey, sides, um, it would be great, and we would really love to sell about 50 meals, so if you guys would um, sign up, we appreciate your um, help. And all the food that we don't sell, we're going to deliver to shut-ins. So, it, you know, it helps if we have these type of events, not just, you know, to financially, but it helps us support other people in the community that, that, we, uh, that we need to. And um, I was going to say, too, Diane Ellen, uh, Ellenberger, so if you have lost an earring, not Diane, but if you've lost an earring lately at any of our events, see Diane, she might have it. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Shelley. Well, friends, good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ. My name is Reverend Jeff Prothero, and I serve here at DeSoto United Methodist Church. I want to make a welcome to everyone who is joining us here in the sanctuary and everyone who is joining us on Facebook Live. We have some special guests here this morning. Uh, Scout Troop is selling popcorn. So anyone gathered here, immediately following worship, you're welcome to help support our scouts, either with a donation or with the purchase of some popcorn. I've already got mine, and I guarantee it will be gone by the end of the week, but uh, get yours as well. It's a really good opportunity for the scouts to uh, raise some funds for their troops. And this morning, we will be doing a brief two-week sermon series on almost to all together. I think many of us right now, we're kind of in kind of that liminal space of what it means to faithfully practice discipleship. And we're perhaps a little frustrated with the way of the world and maybe frustrated with ourselves and seeking to find Christ in the midst of all of that. Well, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, had some wonderful words to say regarding giving ourselves over to Christ fully. And over the next two weeks, we're going to take a little look at what that means for ourselves as we journey together in this life of faith, not only as United Methodists, but as Christians together. Again, as Tammy mentioned, take a look at the bulletin. We have many wonderful things that are happening. It is uh, conference season, charge conference season in the life of the Methodist Church. Um, 
I know there's not a lot to get excited about that sort of thing, but it's important as we assess and evaluate and move forward in the mission and ministry, and it is a key component for who we are. So I invite you, if you are able to come this afternoon, or uh, carve some time out tomorrow evening as we seek to be faithful stewards and faithful gospelers of the church together. Well, friends, now is the time to worship. It's a blessing to be in this space, and wherever you're worshiping from, know that you are in sacred space as well. And so let us continue this time of worship together with the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. You are invited to stand as you are able. Praise the Lord our God. Praise, Praise God's God. holy name. Proclaim Christ's greatness in the world. Celebrate Christ's mighty deeds among the people. Extol the Spirit shaping our hearts. Proclaim the Spirit's grace and mercy. Praise the Lord our God. And please remain standing as you are able for our opening hymn, Take Time to Be Holy, number 395. together let us give ourselves over fully to God's love and one of the ways we can do that both individually and within community is in our prayers together and prayer is both an intimate and communal recognition that the God of our lives truly is the God of our hearts that in Christ through the power of the Spirit we can come to know fully that even in the midst of the world's kind of tumultuous waters sometimes, that we are not alone. That again and again, as I reach out and talk to people, they are always more than grateful and happy knowing that we are a community that prays together, that we're ready to lift up all of our joys, that we're ready to celebrate those moments of God's gracious activity, as well as we're ready to share in one another's burdens together, that we as a faith community, whether it's in this space, whether it's in our own sacred spaces, on this day and throughout the week, we are together on the journey of discipleship. So this morning, we want to lift up in prayer as community in our community, Linda Patton, she will be having surgery on November 1, 
So we will want to be in prayer for Linda and uh, Linda's mother as well during this time of preparation and surgery. Continued prayers for Larry Stephan as he continues to recover from his time in the hospital. So please be in prayer for Larry and Larry's family. Many of you know that uh, past few years we've had the opportunity to have um, Jim Stinky Feet Cosgrove come and play for us. Well, his uh, wife Jenny has been diagnosed with breast cancer and they are currently in the process of setting up a concert, benefit concert to help cover um, medical costs, but we want to be in prayer for Jenny and Jim during this time and more information will be forthcoming regarding the benefit concert. And we just want to celebrate new life and the promise of God's grace in our lives and in our hearts. Uh, Shelly um, let me know this morning that she is a grandparent once again, um, a grandson, an unnamed grandson. So can we help name? Can we have a, you know, write out, just put in the, hey, this is what your grandson should be named. Uh, yesterday was born to uh, Jenny and Ryan, and so it is a blessing to be able to announce this this morning. All of us have prayers in our hearts that we're invited to give over to God. All of you are ones who can communicate with God and one another as we share in the life of faith together. And so I invite all of us to continue to be in an attitude of prayer together as Tammy prays with us the prayer of the people. Draw near to us, O oh God, even as we draw near to you. Open our hearts and minds to your presence, and wake us up from the sleep and inattention holding us back. Prepare us to receive your love, even as we prepare our lives to celebrate the joy of Christ's birth. In joyful hope we pray. Amen. Son Christ gives to all. Help us to grow in our faith lives together so that we can carry this message of love, peace, and hope and faith out into the world. Help us to recognize that though we are flawed, at times broken, sometimes despondent, that your love never ceases and helps us continue to grow as faithful disciples together. This morning we lift up all of our joys concern and concerns. Some we name aloud, others remain close in our hearts, but we know that you receive all that we have to give, that you share and listen and care and embrace who we are and are ready to journey the most difficult of journeys with each and every one of us. This morning is a time of celebration and grace celebrating the goodness of your love, celebrating your continued work in our hearts so that we may grow as faithful disciples ready to share in this life in community together, a community brought forth through the power of Christ, the Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And in response this morning, let us sing, Lord, listen to your children praying. The words are on the inside flap of the board. children's moment as we prepare to have the scripture read. Good morning, friends. It is good to be worshiping with you wherever you are joining us in your sacred space. This morning, we have two very short scriptures. And they're from two different books in the Bible. Um, so I invite you to listen, and then we will explore one of them together. Let's listen as Mrs. McKenzie reads our scriptures this morning. The first scripture comes from Mark chapter 9, verse 24, and the second is from Acts, verse 28, from chapter 26. At that, the boy's father cried out, I have faith. Help my lack of faith. Agrippa said to Paul, Are you trying to convince me that in such a short time you've made me a Christian? Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. So this morning, I want to look at the first scripture that's from Mark, and it's from a boy's father. And I wanted to share a little bit about what's happening here whenever the boy's father responds this way. So the father has brought his child, his son, who is not well, to the disciples to ask the disciples to help heal him. But the disciples weren't able to heal his child. And so then when Jesus comes along, he asks Jesus to act to heal his child. And um, in that exchange, um, the Jesus was asking, or Jesus and the Father are talking, and hang on a second, I'm going to turn the page of my Bible so I can share with you part of what they said. And um, the man was saying, if you can do anything, please help. Please help out. And Jesus says, if you can do anything, question mark, Jesus continues, all things are possible for the one who has faith. And then the boy's father cries out the scripture that we heard today. I have faith. Help my lack of faith. Sometimes we all have moments like this child's father when we struggle with to have faith. It's hard for us to have faith. Or maybe we have questions. And in those moments, you know what? It's very human. All of us have moments like that when it's hard for us to have faith and we have questions about our faith. But did you know there is no question too big for Jesus? There's no question too big for God. They can handle our questions and they can handle the fact that we are still growing and learning in our faith. And so in that moment, the father was crying out for help, right? And we can ask for help too, whenever we have a question or whenever we are having a struggle. And one of the ways that we do that, we can do it just like the child's father did. We can just cry out to God, right? We can yell our prayers, we can cry them with tears, we can sing them, 
with joy, and we can pray them. And so in this moment, we are going to pray together a prayer, an echo prayer. And so I invite you to repeat each line after me. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Jesus. thank you for hearing our questions and our wonderings. Be with us as we grow and learn from our questions. Be with us when we ask for your help. Amen. And children are invited. If you are in preschool through Sunday grade, you are invited to the children's church today. It is in fellowship hall. Friends, let us continue our time of worship as we experience the gift of music in our lives. Shelley will play for us, The Longer I Serve Him. Shelley. Friends, will you pray with me for me? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be a faithful response to the Spirit moving among us in this moment and in all of our sacred spaces. Amen. My grandfather was an engineer, and he was very meticulous in all of his doings. I know some of you are um, intimate partners with engineers in your life. And when I say that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Even when it comes to daily chores, everything had to have a plan. Whether it was mowing the lawn, making the bed, washing the dishes, the planning phase often takes longer than the execution phase. Now one year for Christmas, again, I'm talking about my grandfather, we bought my grandparents a VCR. Do you remember those things? It was a box that you shoved the thing in and it played stuff. It was a lot of fun. And this was back in the mid-80s, so it was kind of a big deal to get one of these things. 
And I remember, you know, it got unpacked, and my grandfather kind of examined it. But it wasn't until about a month later before it was actually hooked up to the TV. Now, when I asked my grandpa why it took so long, because I had a set of videos that I like to watch, like cartoons and stuff, he let me know that before he set it up, he had to read the instructions. All of them. Now, I'm not saying that he was reading Tolstoy, but if you kind of remember, you know, we got to go back in the Wayback Machine, that whenever you got an electronic, the instruction manual was actually fairly thick. Now, today, it's all mostly plug and play. We plug it in, we hope it plays, and if it doesn't, we scream and yell and call somebody, and they say, well, have you turned it on? And it usually works. And I think that would have totally baffled my grandfather because he had to know everything about the thing before he actually worked it. Because he wanted to know how something functioned, whether it was TVs, dishwashers, cars. I remember one time taking my grandpa in, he, he had this beautiful El Camino. Uh, for car lovers out there, you're like, oh, El Camino. And he would take it to the garage, and oh my gosh, he and the mechanic would, it wasn't so much a, a debate, but like this ongoing dialogue that would just seem to last hours and hours and hours. It was really only 10 minutes, but when you're eight and waiting for, for that, it seemed to take a long time. He just had to know, and he had to study the manual. He didn't just want to know how to turn something on, but needed to understand the why of its functionality. But here's the thing. Once all of that got taken care of, once he had figured it out, once it finally got plugged into the TV, I want to say that my grandparents used that thing maybe three times. And I could never quite figure out, well, well, why not? It was as if, for my grandfather, it was simply in the knowing that was enough. It was the methodicalness of figuring it out. Whereas when he finally was able to relax and use it, he couldn't quite get there. Again, it's kind of the, the engineer's mind. Maybe he was thinking about all the things that can go wrong. You know, the tape that could get eaten. Or, you know, what if there's a power surge? All those details. Another thing, this, this is a total sidebar. I told my grandparents, hey, you could take stuff off the TV. And they said, well, but that would be illegal. <laughs> right? Oh, gosh. I love my grandparents. They taught me a lot about faith and living. And even in this moment, I learned a lot, quite a bit about kind of the method necessary to get things done, but sometimes there are limits to that when we don't allow ourselves to fully get over to something. And I think about it quite a bit as I rush through my own day trying to get this and that organized or finished. I don't have time to pause and really study those things that I use as a daily convenience. And I think a lot of us here and a lot of us at home can kind of relate to that. I'd rather shout at the internet when it doesn't work or complain about the person ahead of me going so slow when it is me who is perpetually running late. I prefer the immediacy of things without taking the time necessary to pause and really learn and to better know how to do something. We're in an instant, you know, this isn't anything new, but we are definitely in an instant gratification mode of being in our lives. And so when those things come up where I have to read the instructions, I'll end up skimming way too much in a rush to get finished, which ends up, I'll end up taking more time to fix my mistakes than if I had just done the work in the first place. Now I think in our present day and age, our current faith lives can easily slip into that mode of being. Outwardly, we seek to find the easiest path to get where we're going without doing the harder task of journeying, the harder task of taking that risk to move forward. Rather than take the time to building our relationship with Christ and one another, it is far simpler to kind of take that vending machine approach. If it's there, great. I'll snag it for a dollar and I'll consume it right away. If not, then I am not interested. But there is work to be done with our faith lives. 
work infused with the grace of Christ if we are ready to respond. I know I'm sounding a bit harsh, but we've grown so accustomed to the convenience of things that even when it comes to how we live a life as a faithful discipleship, there is quite often the tendency to hit only the highlights and snag the coffee to go rather than to dig deeper and to take time to grind and brew the coffee. Now, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, and there's a reason why we were called, the people called Methodists, offered a challenge to the people of his day who would lead others in churches and would show up at the seemingly right moments, but perhaps weren't quite willing to take their discipleship journey further. He offered a distinction between the almost and the altogether Christian, noting that they shared in vast similarities, but had a very telling distinction. Jesus would be critical of those who would display a certain type of religiosity that lacked a deeper love of their neighbor. He would point out oftentimes those very leaders who would go through the motion of being religious for show and not for the love of God and neighbor. Outwardly righteous, but inwardly they were lacking the love in their hearts. They did not live a life of love, faith, and service to others. They had grown accustomed to making it about themselves and thinking if we do this much, then that's okay. And John Wesley himself professed to living much of his life in the almost category of things, substituting such things as outward piety for true sincerity. Now, this isn't a criticism of those things that can and do draw us closer to God, such as prayer, works of mercy, giving, showing up to the worship, to worship and the like. But rather, it is if that is all we're doing in hopes of gaining a type of access to God's love, rather than to living into the grace of that very love, then we are lacking. Without that inward growth that accepts our own failings and seeks to fully trust in God, then our outward actions can at times be tenuous. John Wesley was the founder of the Methodist movement. They were called Methodists. They're also called Bible Hawks, but we're not the United Bible Hawks Church. Um, they were called Methodists because they were methodical in their approach to discipleship, sometimes to the point of losing sight, I think, of what it meant to be a full disciple. You know, they would practice Bible study every day, prayer every day, worship every day, would seek to take communion every day. Imagine if we did that here, there would probably be a riot. I would like it, but, you know. <laughs> Not the riot part, the communion part. <laughs> but sometimes it reached a point when when that became the purpose, as opposed to the means to experiencing God's grace, then the purpose itself becomes flawed. You know, if you do something, if you read something, if you do all the steps necessary, but you're not quite ready to make that next leap forward and say, you know what, I do need to fully rely on God for everything, that I may be prepping for all of this, then we're still lacking. We're still in that almost phase of things. And so in the Gospel of Mark, we encounter a scene where a father desperately is seeking Jesus' help, who up to this point, Jesus himself has demonstrated a gift of healing. He's been traveling the countryside, healing. You know, there's some wild stories where he's throwing out demons. He even threw a whole herd of pigs into the ocean. It's some wild stuff. And the father here wants his son to be free from a demon. I think we all can think of those demons in our own lives or in the lives of ones we love that we just, oh my gosh, God, where are you? Can you get rid of them? Please. And perhaps the father had done all the things that he thought he knew how to do. Yet subtly, when there is that moment where the father cries out, I have faith, help my lack of faith, 
It is a time of self-examination and recognition that we ourselves are ultimately powerless, even if we have not given our full selves over to Christ's love. It truly is an honest moment for the Father. You know, the biblical witness is full of honesty and hard truths, particularly with people's interactions with Christ. And this is an honest moment for us. Sometimes when we look deep inside ourselves, we ask why we don't seem to have the faith necessary to move forward. The tedium of the daily grind can slowly diminish our capacity to experiencing the fullness of faith, hope, and love. What is it we are withholding from God that is not allowing for our true selves to thrive? How can we as a community come to better love God and neighbor, even in the midst of great uncertainty? We need both the doing and the giving of ourselves over fully to God. Because life is messy. That's nothing new. I'll probably say that every other sermon. Boy, life is messy. Because it is. It's the truth. And once we live into that reality, we can begin to moving forward into that deeper reality of things. And life moves so quickly that when it comes to matters of faith, we understandably want to take the path of least resistance. A lot of times you want to be like, things all the same, but I'd rather just not do that. Because I don't want to expose myself. I don't want to be made vulnerable before the community and before God. The risk becomes when the great travails occur, we have to shout out, help my unbelief. It is a moment of self-actualization. And in that moment, God's grace still prevails. And then we have the Apostle Paul. You know, here, again, the book of Acts is a wonderful story of the early church, of disciples, of some weird stories, but ultimately it ends with Paul <laughs> traveling the Roman court system. It is a courtroom drama, the second half of Acts. Law and order, New Testament, right there. Boy, that was funny in my head. <laughs> Not so much here. <laughs> But here the Apostle Paul, he's been, you know, he's going through, he's navigating the court system, and he, he literally is. And he comes before King Agrippa, who is representative of uh, the Roman Empire, and, you know, he's just kind of talking to the king about, you know, this is who Jesus is, and nearly convinces the king that he is a person of faith, one who believes in Christ's transformative love. But though Agrippa suspects that Paul is innocent, at one point says, you know what, Paul, if, if you hadn't have done, if you hadn't said this, you would not be in this predicament. There is still the one thing needful that is lacking. Agrippa who says, you know what, you've almost convinced me. How many of us live in that space? You've almost convinced me. But boy, I am not going to step out of myself. I'm not going to relinquish my own control of things. I'm not going to say that perhaps I've been wrong. Whew, we live in that age right now, I tell you what. Agrippa can't quite take that step further. He appreciates and understands and is very sympathetic to Paul's plight. But then we don't hear anything from Agrippa once he says, you've almost convinced me. The underlying subtext, but you quite have not. Though accustomed to being in power, Agrippa can't quite relinquish it and give himself over to Christ's love. Perhaps he too is almost there, but can't quite shed himself of the known quantity of the ways of the world. But grace thrives and continues to work in and through all. Even as we deal with the uncertainties of the world, of our own proclivities of falling short, and we do fall short. We go back, we think life is messy, we make mistakes. It's okay to admit those mistakes. That our own desires do not always, you know, correspond with God's desire for us, 
to work with each other for the betterment of each other, for the growing in love and faith together. We are continually being urged to move from a place of almost to all together. Next week we're going to talk about well, what does it mean to all be all together? You know, how many times have we asked ourselves, my gosh, I am not all together today. Nor will I be tomorrow. <laughs> and guess what? That is probably true any given day of the week. But even as we seek to do that, even as we want to sit and study and, and follow the steps in the manual that have been given to us, we perhaps aren't ready to step out into that altogether space, but the grace is still there and will continue to end, uh, to work in and through each and every one of us. God continues to work in our hearts and lives to be there and to gracefully transform us into faithful disciples of Christ. Now, at times that may mean life is that slow crawl requiring deep patience, but I do think the gumption is there for us to continue to move forward. Because truly, though we may, perhaps even in this moment, be living in that almost space, we will get there all together in the grace of Christ in this community. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we are blessed by the gift of grace in our lives. Help us to see that though we may be in a space of almost, that we may feel like we're uh, sometimes grasping at straws. Help us to see clearly that your love still continues to shape our hearts, minds, and souls. And that though we may be ones who experience the flaws of daily living, that your love is perfecting our souls as we move forward together. In your son's name, amen. Well, friends, through our gifts, through our offerings, we continue to create that space necessary for all people to experience God's love together. Whether it's through the gift of your prayers, through the gifts of your presence, whether it's through simply being a witness to one another, sharing in your joys and concerns, whether it's um, being a resource for the church to continue um, helping support the mission and ministry of the Soto United Methodist Church. Know that each and every one of you have a special and profound place in bearing witness to the world, the giftedness and the graciousness of Christ's love. Now for those of you who wish to give, we will be having a moment of offering. For those who wish to uh, monetarily give at home, you're welcome to visit desotoumc.org and click on the giving tab. But most importantly, it's through your presence, through your willingness to prayer and step out to faith in faith that we continue to be a vital and important ministry toward DeSoto and the wider community. Charles will come forward at this time so that we can receive the offer. Let us pray. Holy God, we 
with humility we offer these gifts to you. May they continue to serve the mission and ministry of this holy church for the transformation of the world. In your son's name we pray. Amen. As we close our time together this morning, I invite us to turn to number 361 in our hymnals. We will sing together, Rock of Ages, but for me. to the scout troop and for everyone on this Sunday may it be a time of refreshment and grace may the week of head be one where you can experience the fullness of God's love in your lives and in your hearts go now in peace amen